All right. Thank, thank you so much for, for having us. Um, it's like a, a huge pleasure to be allowed to present like uh, all of the cool work we're, we're doing at Grab. Um, I am head of uh, engineering for the geo department at, uh, at Grab. And um, yeah, I've been a your OSM fan for like 15 plus years. So it's been a, a long time coming building like maps at a, at a country scale. So for those of you who uh, haven't heard of Grab, who haven't had a chance to see the talk yesterday that we gave. So Grab is a, a super app in, in Southeast Asia. So we're live in like eight countries covering 650 million people population. So very, very large uh, space, 500 plus cities, more than 25 million users every month. And uh, location is like really key to everything that we're doing. So we offer anything from like transport, food delivery, groceries deliveries, but also like financial services um, and many, many other things. So we are like really like integral to like everything that every time like some user opens the Grab app, we're powering that with location services. To give you a sense of the scale, like our location team is powering like more than 800 billion API requests a month. So it's like, like very, very massive scale um, and something that's very critical to what we do. Um, and that's like what the story is today about, right? Like how can we really map and power like all of our eight countries with our own inbuilt solutions, built on house built solutions on top of OSM. So that's really the challenge that we went through over the last few years. And we hope that we can encourage a lot of you to do similar things like in your countries and in your companies um, to achieve that. So, um, and like to, to share like OpenStreetMap at Grab is like been really integral to a lot of things that we've been doing. So. Um, right now, 23% of all OSM edits in Southeast Asia are done by a thousand plus people like editing team. Um, 200,000 plus kilometers of missing roads are mapped. And like every time like a user books like a ride or a food delivery on Grab, like every time we see that anything is deviating, we're like giving that data back to the, to the OSM community, the road network and improving it. So that was there for a long, long time. But we still like, like two, three years ago, we still used a lot of like external data to power our services. And that was like kind of the journey that we went through, right? Like, and I mean, I think for all of you who have like tried really, like having fully independent maps are like, is like doable, but it's extremely hard, right? Like, and there's only like a handful of companies like Apple, Google, who has like really achieved this at their full scale. And they've invested billions of dollars. And while Grab is not like a small company by any means, uh, it's like still a massive challenge. And like, I mean, our, our CEO and our founders are still like, hey, you don't have like unlimited budgets. You need to do this like really, really cheap. So. We're talking, I mean, obviously, always, right? Like, I mean, if, if you're building maps, your CFO is always like in your neck, right? Like you all know that, I guess. So when we started building that, I mean, we really started with this vision, how can we be independent in our eight countries? And we started with like OSM at the core. We started like from the foundation that really like map making has tr drastically changed over the last years. We really built this based on like imagery and AI. And um, yeah, and we've like now, by this time, we're like in six out of our eight countries, we're like independent and power our maps fully. And then the remaining two will be like very, very shortly. Um, and we're gonna talk you a little bit through this journey that we took, right? In our case, like what it means to have maps is like two primary things, right? Like the one is like really high quality, navigable roads. So it means anything from like building footprints, but also like routing, ETAs, all of those use cases. And on the other side, POIs and addresses, right? Like that's the two most important things that we need. and. In order to create that for maps, really, we figured out like street view imagery collection is the most critical input data. And then like combining this with AI to extract the stuff, right? Like, so we've seen that street view imagery collection is extremely reliable, right? Like you can extract all the data. It's very predictable. You can like see almost like everything on this imagery. And the, and the great thing is also now it's like fairly low budget, right? Like we don't need these massive like $200,000 mapping vans anymore, but we can do it like at a much, much lower cost scale. And that's what, what um, Alex is going to uh, talk a little about, like how our journey for this started um, and how we arrived where we are today. All right, so the first version of this program was a bit messy if you look at the end-to-end -end process, but also really effective if we, if we look at the outcomes. So how we started is basically go to stores, buy a bunch of GoPro cameras, uh, we hired uh, a, a few local vendors at that point to, to run collection and we managed everything with uh, things like scripts uh, and, and spreadsheets and a bit of QGI, QGIS for planning. Um, but 
basically field collectors would go, go around, uh, record the imagery, bring the cameras in, copy the data, stitch it on laptops, um, and then do some minimal QC and then upload everything uh, to the cloud. And this was not like a small pilot that, and we changed things immediately, but we actually scaled this uh, across Southeast Asia. We captured most of Southeast Asia with this, uh, with this approach. And uh, yeah, it, it, it worked really well uh, in, the end, in, in the end for us. Not everything was super smooth, but we, we did manage to capture a lot of data and we quickly saw how uh, this became the number one data source for us, both for roads and especially uh, POIs. And we had the advantage of, you know, like learning really quickly, but then providing value right away to grab and to our uh, map making efforts. The second thing that we tried in parallel with the GoPro program was just using phones. Uh, and, and the idea was instead of buying cameras and working with vendors, can we just incentivize Grab drivers to collect imagery uh, with the Cardaview app, which was just uh, recently acquired by Grab at that point. Um, and, and, and then we just started that. So basically the, the drivers, while taking transport or delivery jobs, uh, they would mount the phone either on the car windshield or if they were driving a scooter uh, on the chest mount or in, on the handlebar uh, and just run imagery collection and upload everything from, from the app. So we ran this for a while. Uh, we learned a few things. Uh, on the bright side, uh, drivers love this program. So it was basically like a win-win, right? So they would make some extra money while uh, improving the maps that they were working with uh, every day. And we also proved that doing like two-wheel, two-wheel is our code name for scooters, uh, is, quite, is quite feasible, both the handlebar and the, and the chest mount model. Now on the not so bright side, uh, first of all, we saw high redundancy, uh, meaning that like when, when drivers are taking delivery or, or, or transportation jobs, they often go primarily on the big streets, the main streets of the cities, uh, and you can't have high predictability on the lower, uh, on the minor roads of, of each street, and we're not covering that really fast. Uh, secondly, quality was sometimes great, sometimes so-so. Um, and, and also the amount of POIs that we would capture was fairly low. Uh, and this is basically caused by the limited field of view that the phones typically have. Um, and, and yeah, you, it's more front-facing content than, than what you see on the sides of the streets. And we tried things like lateral kind of mounting. Uh, that, that didn't work because motion blur and rolling shutters and all that fun stuff. So we just basically took a good look uh, at the end-to-end -end process and we aim to improve a few things uh, regarding image quality, positioning, the amount of POIs, uh, user experience, but also having predictable pace and high completion when you look at the city level uh, coverage. And Philip will walk us through more of the solution for all this. Yeah, so the, the solution of, of all of this was that Thank thankfully, one day, like my my former boss, our CTO, said, like, "Hey, Philip, you you definitely like want to like do like something like better than that. Do you want to run our hardware division at Grab?" I said, "Like, sure. Hardware sounds like fun. I've never done it, but I'd love to run a hardware division as well." And so, what we decided to do is we decided to build our own cameras because we've seen that like everything that exists in the market was either super expensive, right? Like we couldn't afford like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar mapping van. We couldn't afford like a twenty, thirty thousand dollar like mapping camera and run them at scale in our emerging markets. It just have not worked for us. So we decided like to build our, our own camera. And this is something that we're really, really proud of. So our team like in Shenzhen really built this like ground up. So we call this Carta Cam. You can like see them at our booth later if you want. So the cameras are basically purpose built for map making. So they're like connected. So they have a 4G chip in there that so they can upload while, while they're driving. They can like take the imagery at home, upload it on a Wi-Fi. It has a high resolution, good field of view. It's built like for all day battery life, like much better than a GoPro. So it has like two and a half hours active recording, but we can also like trigger it to say like, hey, this road, so we have already a lot of images. We don't need to record here. So it's basically can like record the whole, like operate the whole day and record as needed. It has a two teraops AI processor in there. So you can like run detections on the edge. Like privacy is super important for us. So we like blur people's faces on the edge that it never reaches our cloud. Um, it has a, like a dual band GPS chip in there, so it's like really high quality location data, not like GoPros that are all jerky, like giving you like really crappy data. Um, and it's like really like cost effective, right? Like so it's like the size of a GoPro and it's like the, the cost profile is like fast, it's like very, very similar. So we did that. 
Um, and we deployed that, right? Like, so you can like see, like we put this like on like driver's helmets, like our region as Alex has outlined, is very much like motorcycles, right? Like, so we need to have a setup that can go like on bicycles, motorcycles and narrow roads. So we deployed that and got like really, really good imagery and got like a really good start. And we were like, wow, this is like really amazing. Like building like this integrated end-to-end -end solution is really the way to go to like map at scale at a good cost level. And you see like some of the AI detections in here, like face blurring, license plate blurring. So like, this is cool. This allows us to like protect privacy at one side and the other side like collect data. And then we figured out like the one big thing that's like still missing from like really professional grade collection, it's not 360, right? Like we wanted to not only map roads, but also POIs. So like in typical grab fashion, our team hacked like a solution. So what better than just put like four of those in a helmet? You need to like go a lot to the gym to be able to carry one of those of your helmet. It's like really heavy. But like in any case, right? Like it demonstrated that it's like a really powerful solution. But obviously we knew that's not like helmet mountable, but it gives you like great uh, data, right? Like so now suddenly we get like super high quality data at like a 20th of the cost of a professional map making camera. So really amazing. And what we're building now is like basically said like, okay, cool, let's like really like build the, the next iteration of that. So you put them in like an amount and like very ingenious, like build for like emerging markets, right? Like you see on this, like there's like this little safe box so the driver can like mount the cameras in there, like lock them that nobody steals them. We have like our walkers uh, walking around with these cameras. So we've really scaled up imagery collection with our like Carter Cam 360 Lite, how we call it, um, and done that. And then the other big part that Alex is going to sorry that Alex is going to talk about is like how we manage the collection. All right. So besides the great images, right? How do we do we collect in all the streets in a predictable and, and high completion fashion? And our answer was basically building great collection software that integrates with the cameras. So we call our tool Jarvis. And it does a couple of things for us. So first thing, it manages work. So it takes a big city or a county or a state and it breaks it down into like manageable collection tasks. Secondly, we have live tracking of where the cameras are and what they're doing. And we can even like remotely configure them, trigger uploading and all that fun stuff. Uh, it unlocks a lot of possibilities when, when cameras have SIM cards in them. Um, three, it's sort of like a marketplace for drivers. So drivers see in the app, uh, these available tasks around them, they see upfront pricing for them, how much we pay for them, and they just assign tasks to themselves. Uh, and then it, the app guides them where to go and, and what to collect basically with the Carter Cam, which is also paired to the app. So uh, you don't need to deal with like physical buttons, taking the camera out and doing all that. It's, it's configurable from the, from the app basically. And lastly, it, it helps us do uh, quality control at, at scale. So it checks for image quality, things like rain or bad lighting uh, with, with computer vision. And then it checks also for road completion. So we make sure that the, once the driver says, hey, I'm done with the ta this task, all the roads in scope are, are, are captured. Um, so last, last thing from my side, I, want, I just want to say this is a hyper-local operation for us. Uh, we intentionally uh, invest in upskilling, training some of the uh, local drivers in, in all the streets, uh, all the cities in, in, in Southeast Asia, instead of you know, hiring vendors and running, running all, that, all that operation. We think, and we actually see that the drivers are doing a better job than the previous vendors because the tool helps them to do that and they have good intentions to do that. So it's a, it's a highly successful model for us, and this is what we're scaling massively in, uh, in 2022. And Philip will walk us through the, some of the closing notes. Yeah, so I mean, just, just to wrap up, right? Like we really believe that this model of like gig mappers, where we can create an income for people like creating maps, right? Like, so I think for a lot of people in our community, it's a very meaningful additional income that they had over COVID in a time that like our regions got hit really, really hard. So we, we really believe in that, like we can create together with these gig mappers, fantastic maps. Um, and we really believe that it's a great partnership with the, with the OSM communities, which we work very tightly with, right? Like, so we have um, substantially contributed to make the maps better in Southeast Asia. We've contributed like our data and collaborated with lots of other orgs. You have like heard our talk yesterday with Meta. So we're really like in this where we think it's not like a grab thing, but it's really like a, a community and a collaboration across much companies. So you've seen like our OSM contributions. We have a Cartier View as a tool available for the, for the community to use. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, we are really firmly believing in, in partnerships. We are now working with a few other orgs across like different regions to like replicate this model. And I think what I want to leave you with, right, like that, like building maps at like the scale of countries and like whole markets to replicate like and replace like external vendors. It's really hard, but it's very, very doable. So we hope that you all guys can like convince your like own companies to do more of that uh, and build all of that on top of OSM. Thank you very much.